Hey guys, welcome to Puddin's Kitchen. We have a special guest today, Gardner Douglas of The Oyster Ninja. I'm so happy to have you here today. Um, today we're gonna talk about all things oysters and learn about how to shuck oysters, how to buy oysters, and just oyster etiquette in general. I don't know about you guys, but I don't know enough about oysters, okay? Sometimes I go to the store, go to a restaurant, and I feel a little intimidated. It's like wine almost, you know? There's so many different varieties, and you know, you, you kinda need to know some things about oysters. So I'm really I'm happy to have you here today so yeah. you can teach us about oysters. No doubt. So, uh, yeah, so I'm Gardner Douglas, the Oyster Ninja. Uh, I got a podcast all about oysters and uh, met put in a while ago. She was yeah. actually on the podcast. So now we're joining up to do this uh, oyster class uh, and we got James River Oysters. So I just want to talk about a few things. First of all, um, when you're going to buy oysters, um, you want to know what oysters you like. And if you want to experiment, that's cool too. But your main uh, options are going to be either like a salty oyster uh, or a sweet oyster. So when you're in the store or if you're at a fish market or wherever, uh, all oysters are the same. The only thing that changes the oyster is the region that they come from. So uh, let's just take these James Rivers uh, in particular, in, uh, for example, river oyster. So when you hear river oyster, um, bay oyster, anything like that. Uh, it's going to be on the sweeter side. It's going to be more mineral, more uh, sweeter, uh, creaminess is how they're described. Uh, and then if you say like ocean or um, salts, anything like that, you automatically want to think salty. So that's the main thing. Know what you're looking for if you, or know what you like rather. Or you can mix it up also, you know, just to have an option. Um, so once you know what type of oyster you like, then you want to say, all right, what am I looking for? Uh, when you look at the oysters, you want to make sure that their mouth is closed. And this is the mouth of the oyster. So you want to make sure the mouth of the oyster is closed. You want to make sure that it's not too muddy. You also want to ask the, uh, the sales associate, hey, can I see your tag, your uh, uh, shell tag? And that's going to tell you when the oysters were harvested. It's also going to tell you uh, when they were shipped off, all that good stuff, because you want fresh. You got to have them fresh because Every day they're out the water, it uh, changes the taste of the oyster. So you want fresh oysters. Hey, I have a question for you. Ask away. So if the oyster, if you happen to buy a bag of oysters and you get home and some of them are open, mm -hmm. what should you do with those oysters? Good question. Um, it all depends on what they look like once you open them. Okay. Um, sometimes if you don't want to take any chances, just throw them away. Okay. You got a hundred oysters majority of the time. If you're going to get a bag or a box of oysters, one is not going to hurt you. Okay. But other times like you can get an oyster and we'll get into that once I start shucking an oyster. But if it's, if the oyster is real dried up, throw, throw it away. Okay. Um, if the oyster is uh, dried up, no uh, water in it, throw it away. If it stinks, throw it away. Too easy. So, Speaking of that, let's just get into like shucking an oyster. Okay. Because, um, right? Yeah. We're gonna shuck? Yeah. All right. I'm so, gonna try. <laughs> so when, you, when you're shucking an oyster, um, know the type of oyster that you have, of course. Um, so these are two different oyster knives. Uh, this is called a Chesapeake Stabber. Okay. And this is a uh, Dexter, but this is for like a, a stronger shell. Okay. So I wouldn't use my Chesapeake Stabber on this oyster unless I'm going to go right through the mouth of the oyster. Is that considered a large oyster? It isn't. It isn't. It's okay. not really the size. It's more of the shell, the okay. actual shell, because this shell is going to be hard. Okay. Um, sturdy. A lot of farm raised oysters are, they have a brittle back. So if you try to go through the back, it's just going to pop right off. If you're popping off like dirt, shell, debris is going to go inside of the oyster and that's just going to add another step to when you're shucking and cleaning the oyster off. Okay getting it ready to eat. Okay. So if I was stabbing an oyster, I would go directly through the mouth, uh, but I'm not going to do that Okay. because these are harder shells, so I'm going to shuck it from the back. Okay. Okay. So whenever you have a harder shell, you should try to shuck it from the back rather than shucking You should try, as long as you back. got the right knife. Okay. Gotcha. You got to pair your oysters and knives up just like you would pair your oyster and wine up. Okay. All right? Okay. That makes sense. So um, we're just going to go into shucking. All right. Um, so this is the back of the oyster or the hinge mm -hmm. this is the front or the mouth the bottom is the cup the cup goes inside your hand and the flat part is the top okay so you want the mouth pointing forward you want the 
back of the oyster towards you. Okay. So what you're going to do is you're just going to place that knife in. And you, what you want to do, you want to use leverage instead of muscle power. And then you just want to rotate the handle just like if you were tur tur turning the door now. So okay. get it in there. And once it's in there, you know it's in there because you can't go anywhere. And then you just want to rotate. Oh, wow. And once you hear that pop, mm -hmm. the next thing to come is like the, the juice of the oyster. Okay. So pop. And then you want to just rotate. Rotate, 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 and then boom. Wow, you make Ooh, that look so my easy. My gracious. That's a beautiful oyster. That is a beautiful oyster. <laughs> that was lucky. No, just joking. Just Whatever, joking. he's the pro. <laughs> Speaking of pro, so I am the nationally ranked oyster shuck, and I'm seventh in the country right now. And wow. oyster shucking is love. That's so awesome. um, what I did was I rotated, rotated, rotated. What you're trying to do is disconnect that adductor muscle from the top shell. Now, once you disconnect that top shell, like this, boom, it's going to be here. And then you just want to slide down and disconnect the, the bottom uh, adductor muscle. Okay, because there's a muscle that's connected to right. the bottom of the shell. So you got a muscle here. Like I said, every oyster is the same. It doesn't matter if these were salt oysters, bay oysters, doesn't matter. Every oyster is going to have that adductor muscle here and adductor muscle here. Okay. So I'm going to pop. Rotate, 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 disconnect, and then disconnect. Okay, so I think I should give this a try. Boom, I'm let's a little do it. scared of Come stabbing on. myself, mm -mm, but um, I'm just gonna try it out. Anyways, right. okay, so I'm gonna get. So get you a nice, one. nice oyster. Okay, I'm putting it in the palm put, of my hand. Put the cup in your hand. Okay. Put the cup in your hand. The cup. Mm hmm. Okay. <laughs> This is a hard okay. one. No worries. This is a hard one? This is a hard No, no, we, not saying that, but okay. meaning what I'm saying is like to determine which one was a cup. Yeah, exactly. Not. So just know the back goes towards you, right? Okay. And the cup is going to be just a little bit deeper than the top. You can see okay. how it's kind of flat. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can't. I don't know. I got those oyster eyes. You got oyster eyes. Yeah. I don't. So, um, okay, so what we're not going to do, remember? Yes. Remember, we, I don't. we don't want to use a chest peak stabber. Okay, we don't want to use a chest peak stabber. Because the chest peak stabber has a nice flimsy blade. Okay. And that's for going through the mouth for the oyster in tight spaces. Okay. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to take the, you right handed? Yes. Okay, good. Okay. All right, so we're going to go in. Okay. No muscle, remember? No muscle. No okay. muscle. All right. Now we're going to apply pressure. All right, bring your hand on the handle of the knife. Okay. Okay. All right. Now, we're going to apply pressure until we can't go any further. Uh-huh. Boom. We're in uh -huh. there. And now we're just going to rotate the knife. Boom. Uh-oh. Oh, oh, oh We're cooking with hot grease nice. now? Nice. We're cooking with hot grease okay. now. All right. So now we want to create leverage on that top shelf. Okay. Uh, go down. Go down. There you go. Okay. And now move it all the way around. You got it. But you want to keep that blade on the top of the shell. So when, when, while you're rotating, it's disconnecting that muscle. You got me? Oh, okay. I gotcha. Right. Just like if you was peeling an apple, you want to, you know, you got it. I feel the juice. You, she feels the juice. I feel the juice. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, oh, oh, no. All right. No worries. No worries. Disconnect. Just a little Disconnect. shimmy shimmy going on here. Okay, there we go. Boom. Oh, look at that. That's beautiful. That's pretty good That's for beautiful. a first timer, right? I think so. Like a champ. So All you right, want to bring cool. it around to you now. Okay. And then you want to disconnect that bottle. All right. Look at that. It's already disconnected. Yay! Champ. I shucked my first oyster. I'm so excited. When do I get to eat it? Uh, you, <laughs> that's on you. That's on you. All right, cool. All right. That was easier than was it seemed. Easy. Yeah, it was very, yeah. very easy. Cool. You know. All right. Voila. And you want to keep the juice in there, is that correct? So when you when, when you properly shuck an oyster, um, juice is going to fall out anyway. The true flavor of the oyster is inside of the oyster. Okay. So we don't have to worry about actually, you know, um, losing juice because more juice is going to come out of okay. the oyster. Okay, cool. Um, I definitely want to give these a try. Let's get in. So we have um, some mignonette here, uh, right here. And Good. then we have some lemons and some quick cocktail sauce. My favorite hot sauce, Tabasco sauce. His favorite hot sauce, Crystal. 
So I will try the Tabasco All right, first. <laughs> All right. So um, being the oyster ninja, I see oysters ate wrong all the time okay how what is the what is the right way to eat a the oyster? right way to eat an oyster is first of all if you've never had the oyster try the oyster by itself okay don't worry about putting all the cocktail sauce the lemon all of that good stuff it is good it's tasty don't get me wrong mm-hmm. but you want to actually know how the oyster tastes because if you get a bad one Yes, you will know, but you can, before you get to that oyster, like to go and have it in, you know, starting to chew it, you can know what it tastes like, what it smells like. Right. So just like one, you want to take it all in, you know, you want to bring it up to your mouth, you know, you're taking it all in, you know, got the mineral flavors and everything Yeah. and then take it back, give it a couple of chews and then swallow. Oh, that's really good. And then, yeah, and then you let, I'm not going to eat it because I don't like these oysters. I told <laughs> Quentin I wasn't going to say it, but I said it. But that's the thing about oysters. Once you know what you like, then you can do it however you want. Now, I will, what I will do is, where has Ben go? Don't worry about it. What I will do is I'll throw some hot sauce on it and I will enjoy it. Okay. So are you putting hot sauce on it? Because I noticed when I was tasting it, it wasn't, it wasn't very briny at all. Right. Um, like you said earlier, because it's uh, it's from James River, it doesn't have as much salt in it. Right. So it does taste a lot more creamy. I do taste a lot more minerals, um, but not really salty at all. So I would think that um, pairing it with a mignonette or with a hot sauce would kind of make it sing a little exactly. bit more. Exactly. Yeah. And some people actually like the flavor of just, you know, river water. So that, exactly. that's perfect for them, you know. Exactly. But for me, I like my oysters like a little salty. Uh, Cocktail sauce, you can never go wrong with cocktail sauce. Pickled onions, once I found that out, I was like, oh, hold on. Let's do it again. Exactly. You know, so yeah. <laughs> so I'm just going to try it. So you want the tip of the, you want the mouth of the oyster to your mouth, take it back, give it a couple of chews, and then swallow. Okay. Mmm, too easy. All right, cool. All right, so what we're also going to do is um, do some charbroiling of these oysters, which a lot of times people like to eat oysters raw, but there's a lot of ways that you can cook with oysters as well that are really lovely. So we're going to do a charbroiled oyster today that um, we're gonna put uh, Alfredo sauce and put a little bit of Parmesan cheese on top. And it's kind of um, a nod to New Orleans and uh, all the char- charbroiled o- oysters that they do there. It's amazing. So we're gonna get to that next. Boom. There we go. Hey guys, so we are going to make our charbroiled oysters. We've got our James River oysters here, which we just sampled with the Oyster Ninja. They're great oysters, but they're not at all briny or salty. So you want to punch up that flavor by adding something to them. So today we're gonna be adding a um, uh, Alfredo sauce that I made from scratch. There's also another video that we'll, sh- we'll have for you of the Alfredo sauce, but it's an Alfredo sauce that's basically um, garlic, butter, milk and then parmesan cheese and we have some additional parmesan cheese here that we're going to sprinkle on top a bit of a cajun seasoning that i mixed up here just cayenne pepper thyme uh, garlic powder and onion powder not putting any salt in there because we're going to get a lot of salt in our alfredo sauce and our cheese got some parsley here and we're going to serve it with some lemon wedges so let's get started we're going to sprinkle all of these oysters that have been shucked nicely and clean perfectly by our professional shucker uh gardner douglas at oyster ninja definitely follow him he's got a lot going on and coming up in the next couple of weeks there's a a sip and chuck event on april 25th i believe that i'll definitely have uh, a link to uh for you guys if you want to attend the tickets are on sale right now so we're sprinkling this all over them and like i said there's no salt in this so you can be pretty generous is is spicy as you like it um you can put as much spice on here as you like i like a lot as you know by now so i'm going to kind of douse these with uh the spice and like i said these these oysters don't have any salt so you want to give them a nice um a nice coating of seasoning uh be be pretty liberal with your seasoning here and then i'm going to put on a bit of parsley and this doesn't have to be perfect just put it just get it on there. Then we're gonna get it on the grill. So you wanna make sure that each um, each oyster has some parsley on it so that you get that fresh taste of parsley. 
and you want to maybe even reserve a little bit for the end so you can put a little bit of parsley at the end um, with herbs it's always nice to if you do cook with it to also add some fresh herbs at the end of it too because then you taste both the fresh and cooked version of that herb which is great okay so we're going to spoon over some alfredo sauce bring this closer okay and you're just putting you're putting probably about depending on the size of the oyster i would say oh i'd say a tablespoon if you have a smaller oyster just kind of eyeball it like you're not you're not completely dousing it you're just putting enough in there to coat the oyster and um, make sure that all those flavors will will get into the oyster when it's cooked make sure you get each individual oyster um, I love, so basically I found out about charbroiled oysters from a visit to New Orleans and oh my God, it was my favorite thing. I, I went to one particular place called Acme Oyster House and they had these amazing oysters, charbroiled oysters. And honestly, like I like my oysters raw on the half shell. So I, I typically don't like too many versions of cooked oysters unless it's fried or something like that. Who doesn't like fried food, right? So um, when I had them, I was shocked at how good they were. And I told myself I had to get home and make them myself. So this is my version of it, which is really good. And you guys definitely give me your feedback. If you have a version that you like or a way that your family makes these, then definitely let me know about it. So now I'm sprinkling the Parmesan cheese on top and you're going to be really liberal with that too. And like I said, all of these things that I'm adding on top are adding, um, a bit of salt so don't worry if you end up getting some James River oysters or some other oysters that aren't necessarily like in brackish water or in um, salty waters um, then you know just go ahead and dress them up nicely with with whatever you like on top you can definitely use this recipe it's simple it's easy and it tastes great okay Cool. So we got our oysters all dressed with our Alfredo sauce and our Parmesan cheese. And now we're going to go outside and put them on the grill. Hey guys, so super simple way to make an amazing charbroiled oyster. Um, we have our finished product here and they look great. They're nice and brown. They're all, they got very bubbly on the grill. And so now we're just gonna drizzle them with a little bit of fresh lemon juice. All right. And then I'm gonna give it a try. Oh wow. So if you remember the James River oysters, we're kind of on the bland side, so it's good that we put that Alfredo sauce on top and the spices to kind of spice it up. I've also got some grilled bread here, and of course a glass of wine. Definitely join me for my next video. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, and I'll see you next time. Thanks guys.